Leslie here with another week of Parenting Paused. We have a lot cooking over at Pure Joy. We're getting ready to do the Happily Family Conference. It's going to be in November, and I'll be telling you more about that as we get a little closer. I did an interview with Jason and Cecilia Hilke, who I adore, and we talked a lot about how too much connection can backfire. Now, in conscious parenting, we always hear, or I always heard, you may too, to connect, connect, connect. Now, I had a void as a young child around connection, so this was just pure nectar for me. I was so excited that I just got to connect, connect, connect (laughs) with my daughter. But that didn't mean that I actually connected with my daughter I was connecting with my need to feel loved, to feel connected to her. And so my connection was not a true connection with my daughter, attuning, seeing when she needed connection, when she didn't. It was actually what I call over-connecting or engulfing. And that means I engulfed my daughter with my need to connect And then felt so incredibly rejected and abandoned when she said no. And I just got so crazy because I thought, I am just doing this all wrong. Because I read all the things, I knew how to do it, I knew what connection looked like, and I wasn't actually able to make it happen. And my daughter was pushing away even further. She was closing the door, saying no. And I was just in a big old stew of feeling rejected and abandoned. And then I started acting like a rejected person. I started saying, well, just forget it then. I don't even care. And I kind of moved back and I just even didn't even try to connect, which in some way was healthier than my engulfment. Because what it did, it sent me back into myself and to make a connection with my heart to make a connection with my needs so that I could meet them. Instead of expecting my daughter to fill that big void that I had, I started turning back in, safe seating, and giving myself what I wanted from my daughter. Now, what that looked like was every time I engulfed and my daughter said no or pushed me away, that's how it felt, I would experience the collapse in my chest. I would experience the voice in my head saying she doesn't love me or, you know, what's wrong with me that she doesn't want to connect because I'm trying so hard and I could hear this voice. So as I went to my safe seat, I would gently talk, kindly talk to this part of myself and say, oh, honey, of course you want her to connect. And of course, you want to feel that good, yummy feeling you feel inside. And it is so painful when you offer yourself so deeply and she closes the door or says no. Oh, sweetheart, I'm right here with you. I would tell myself. And as I began to talk to this part of myself, instead of expecting my daughter to go, oh, yes, mother, I would love to be with you and I would love to fill your void of connection. <laughs> when I started giving that to myself, something miraculously started to change. I was able to step into my more adult capacity and actually see that I was not actually connecting with my daughter. I was connecting with my younger self or trying to connect with my younger self. I had projected my younger self onto my daughter and I was trying to give myself everything that I hadn't gotten. Well, what a beautiful thing, yes? Oh gosh, I love myself for that. And yet it wasn't what my daughter needed. It wasn't what she perceived as connection. So the more I came back in and gave that to myself, and the same will be true for you, if you meet yourself in those places where you feel rejected and abandoned and you love yourself, then you will be able to look out and see your child from a different view, a different lens. And what I saw was that my daughter 
didn't have a void of connection. She had over-connection. She had a void of separation. And so she was creating that. So the more separation I took and healthily connected with myself, then I was able to walk toward my daughter and actually see when she was open to connection, actually seeing what kind of connection felt good to her. And everything began to shift as we found our way together. And as if I found myself stepping into this adult capacity to recognize that this whole parenting journey wasn't about me. (laughs) And it feels like it's about me when I'm actively triggered emotionally. And yet when I realized what was about me was that I could turn in, I could offer myself kindness, I could offer myself love then I could actually see that it was actually about my daughter, me creating an environment for her to step into her brilliance and to get her connection needs met, not mine. All right, lovey, so glad you joined us. Make sure to go over to Parenting Pause to get a free copy of the Safe Seat uh, document there, or no, actually it's a video series that I did for you that'll walk you through if you're not familiar with the safe seat. Keep looking out for the Happily Family information. I created a really cool guidebook on healthy separation. And once you sign up, you'll be able to uh, go there and pick up that free guidebook as well as uh, watch my interview and all the other amazing interviews that Jason and Cecilia bring together. Such amazing folks to share about and give you support for your parenting journey. Thank you for listening to this episode of Parenting Post. If you enjoyed the episode, do me a favor and share it with your mama friends. You can also leave a review wherever you listen, which will support getting the Pure Joy message out. Come on over to the Pure Joy Parenting Practice Facebook page or join me on Instagram to hear more. And don't forget to download your free copy of the Safe Seat course on the Pure Joy website. And while there, check out the offerings page to go deeper in the Pure Joy world.